Hi and welcome to your Niagara News headlines for Friday, July the 13th, provided by Bullet News Niagara and ICFAB TV. I'm Annie Sylvester. Let's take a look at the local weather first off. Tonight, clear skies, a low of 22. Saturday, sunny, a high of 30, except 27 along the lakeshore. Sunday, a mix of sun and clouds, a 30% chance of showers, a low of 22, a high of 30. For Monday, a mix of sun and clouds, a low of 19, a high of 30. For Tuesday, sunny, a low of 22, a high of 33. And now let's check in with your local headlines. Tragedy early this morning, leaving three people dead and five others injured after a two-car head-on collision in Pelham on Regional Road 20 east of Victoria Avenue just after 1 a.m. Three people were pronounced dead at the scene. Five more people were sent to Welland Hospital, four of them in serious condition. The cause of the accident is unknown at this point as investigators and emergency crews are still on the scene. Please go to bulletnewsniagara.ca for updates on this developing story. Niagara Regional Police homicide investigators are seeking public assistance to locate two missing laptop computers wanted in connection with the Madeline Hood murder investigation. On Saturday, the 19-year-old St. Catherine's woman's body was found inside an apartment located at 11 East Hampton Road following a small fire. Police later charged 19-year-old Cassell Fansworth of St. Catherine's with first-degree murder and arson with disregard for human life. Yesterday, investigators issued a media release asking for assistance in locating two laptop computers. The first is described as a white Macintosh that has a pink and black colored silhouette decal of a female on the cover. The second is described as a white Macintosh computer having a multicolored decal of a geometric pattern on the cover. Please call police if you have any information. Emergency responders and hazardous materials crews were called to Lion Dunk Schoolie Park located at 32 Seymour Avenue in Meryton yesterday afternoon where a large chlorine leak occurred sending at least 12 people to hospital. The incident happened after two liquid chemicals, chlorine and muriatic acid, were accidentally mixed causing a release of gaseous chlorine. Six people were taken to St. Catherine's General Hospital, four in stable condition and two serious, while six more were taken to Greater Niagara General Hospital in Niagara Falls. Initial symptoms include difficulty breathing. The pool will need to be drained and cleaned before it's used again. It's been closed until further notice. Well, the buzz has been ongoing since two weeks ago when the news broke that St. Catherine's Mayor Brian McMullen's Fifth Street home in the city's rural West End had been seized by the Royal Bank and was on the market under a power of sale. McMullen and his wife had taken out a $750,000 mortgage on the home in November of 2010. And a week later, the couple secured a $100,000 mortgage from a private individual. The 24-acre property has been on the market for 18 months and was originally selling for $1.25 million, but the latest listing shows an asking price of $725,000. McMullen has largely refused to discuss details surrounding the seizure because he says they involve other members of his family and he doesn't want to drag their names into the public arena. In an interview with Bullet News, he said that no one wants to have those kind of stories out there, but he is not going to hide and he's moving forward with both feet planted firmly on the ground. Please go to Bullet News Niagara for more on that story. Okay, let's take a quick break here. More news in a moment. Niagara Battery and Tire, with three locations to serve you better. Michelin Hydro Edge Tires for your car or minivan. The value keeps rolling kilometer after kilometer. Niagara Battery and Tire, home of legendary service. Welcome back. And now for Rick Van Sickle's Win Wine Picks of the Week. They include the newly released Vine Mount Ridge Riesling from Calamus, along with two new releases from Creekside Winery. The three picks this week are Calamus Riesling Vine Mount Ridge 2011, Creekside Laura's White 2010, and Creekside Sauvignon Blanc 2011. And now we take a look at a local band, Theater Crisp, that I got a chance to catch up with at the recent Scene Music Festival. Let's take a look. Here we go. You reach the crisp back again. Go run and tell a friend. Funky fresh heads helping to make the people sweat. Put some kick up in your step. We're 
different from the rest. We make music for the life loving kid up in your chest. Not the big chatter. Sick of putting up this snake ladder. Filling up these kids' heads with bullshit and cake batter. Well, I mean, I always wrote a lot of hip hop music and like that's kind of the main influence of the band so uh, I wanted to bring together some guys to play some live stuff and uh, rather than just beats like on a CD player so I recruited these guys and uh, we started writing music together. Everybody passionate about music and stuff too. Let's talk a little bit about some of your inspiration in terms of music and what sort of uh, leads your music that you do today. Uh, well, for me personally I come from more of a rock metal background so obviously there's always your Iron Maidens and, and Rob Zombie and stuff like that. I'm influenced by a lot of uh, classic rock, like I like uh, like John Bonham from uh, Zeppelin, um, but also the, a lot of the old school hip hop stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, and old school hip hop stuff like uh, instrumentals by just Dr. Dre, uh, Mob Deep, stuff like that. So, what do you think the importance is of getting up on stage and doing stuff live? Like, what is that for you? Is it the adrenaline rush, or what is the importance of it? Connecting with the audience. Um, for me as a dancer and a musician, uh, I think expression, personal expression, uh, collective w within this group, I think music is a universal language and it's the best thing, best form of expression you can possibly do. Let's just talk about uh, your actual, you've got a recording now that's out. Uh, we released an album in April called Modern Days. It's our first album we released. So, like, we've been working for three years. You gotta get that? Uh, no. Okay. We've, been, we've been working on it for three years. So. Uh, it's been a like a long road to get to it, but like yeah. our 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 lead guitar player Jay Beatty, who isn't here right now, but that's okay. He plays in another band, so it's not a big deal. But he produced the album, and uh, having him like adding him to the band really did a lot for us because he helped to produce the album, and he's an audio engineer and stuff. So I mean, it really all came together when he joined the band, and uh, we're really happy with that. I mean, we're happy with uh, what we've created and. Uh, yeah, we're happy with releasing an album and we're working on new songs and stuff too for a follow-up album already. I think it was all of our first times and it was, uh, it's awesome. We love being in the studio. We could we could stay there for probably for a week. Uh, our livers probably wouldn't like us too much if we did because we get the beers going, just having a great time and uh, it's, it's just a fun experience. And you just reminded me another question I haven't asked you yet. Where'd you get the name? Uh, <laughs> funny, I mean like, there's not really a big thing to the name. It's just like kind of like, uh, on a recording program on my computer that I used to use, there was a function, like a, a reverb that I used to use, a uh, filter thing, it was called theater, and then in bracket crisp. Trying to keep it crispy ever since, yeah. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> and that's a wrap for today's news from everyone here at Bullet News and ICBAD TV. I'm Annie Sylvester. Have a great weekend.